The NSARS memorial of Wednesday was filled with the good, the, uh, the bad and the ugly. Young people came out to protest, police arrested demonstrators and tear gas journalists and the federal government debunked reports of killings at the Lekki Toll Plaza. We'll be talking about all of it today and ask the question, has anything changed one year after? We'll also take a look at the papers, like always. An analyst would be joining us this morning for that. Good morning to you. Thanks for joining us on a Thursday morning here on Plus TV Africa. It's uh, The Breakfast and I am Osaogi Ogmawa. Good morning. And I am Messi Abopo. Good morning. Uh, of course, uh, with all the drama yesterday, we have a lot to talk about concerning the end SARS protest and um, the memorial, really, and uh, the events from yesterday, the reactions from persons who were on ground, journalists, and, of course, the police. And uh, we very likely will be speaking with some of those people who, um, you know, witnessed a lot of the, you know, happenings yesterday. The big question, really, um, is has anything changed? And I'm, I'm sure you already know the answer to that. But of course, we'll be having people join us to share their views on what really is different between, um, you know, the last one year since the NSAS protests in 2020 and where we are today in 2021. Mm. But we'll start with the top trending stories. And of course, just share, you know, the conversation still continues with regards to uh, police brutality and the respect for the rights of the Nigerian. Uh, for everyone who followed the events of yesterday and saw pictures, saw videos uh, for people who were on ground at the Lekki Toll Plaza, uh, there's so much, you know, that um, happened yesterday, and it felt like um, opening up old wounds. Um, I saw a lot of the views and a lot of the reactions from people online who basically were saying about the same thing, that it, it doesn't seem like anything whatsoever is different about the way that the uh, Nigerian police uh, sees its citizens, you know. And I saw um, a person, you know, ask that question, how the Nigerian police doesn't understand, you know, in any way, um, you know, the, the responsibility that it has, and it always sees... It always positions, it positions itself, you know, as anti-people. And, and that's really what it is. Um, it, the, the Nigerian police officers always see themselves as anti-people. You know, they're almost never, you know, feeling like they're responsible for the lives and for the protection of the people that they are called to serve. Um, and uh, they've continued to be that way. And one year after the, uh, the NSAS protest, from my analysis, absolutely nothing has changed. Definitely, to nothing has changed. Mm. We now have the... I'm not sure what group that is. L N C S L L N. The guys wearing purple shirts and brown trousers. It seems like they joined the fight yesterday. But well, like you rightly mentioned, nothing has really changed. Uh, that's because the same reason Nigerians took to the street to protest. We kind of saw a reputation or the reason why they went on the street in the first place. So I felt like you know no lessons learned at all. It felt like. Uh, all of the things that we have been talking about, we have just been blabbing, if I would like to put. It feels like we've just been making a hell of a noise and no one is listening. And it's quite unfortunate to even think that, you know, it is constitutionally guaranteed that everyone has a right to uh, a peaceful assembly. Why do you use tear gas on the people? The only time that would happen, because they do have a right to gather, they do have a right of association and the only time that right you know will be taken from them is when they constitute a nuisance that would translate into destruction of lives and properties but that has never been the case so ironically like i always say one would expect that the police would be there to ensure that those who are protesting are protected and that other element would not hijack the protest rather you find that that people uh, you, you find out that those who should protect the protesters are the ones harassing. And, and it's crazy um, that the people who uh, should protect the protesters, you know, turn out to be the reasons the protesters are even out on the streets in the first place. <laughs> because the people who have been paid, who, who have taken a vow to and, and sworn to serve the people, you know, have now become the oppressors and become, you know, the ones that people are protesting against. And, you know, they still don't seem to understand exactly what it is. And, you know, I, I was referring to someone's statement earlier by Sam Hart. It says, why the Nigerian police sees themselves as oppressors of the people is beyond me. How can your entire setup and MO be anti-people? Who led you to believe the force in your title is reserved for the people? How can we reorientate the police for, uh, uh, to be for the people? 
And that's really what it is. And, and, and this, this, you know, transcends from the top to the bottom, you know, from uh, the commission of police all the way down to, what are these people called? The LNCS, LNSC, um, let's see if I can find, I can find, find the Lagos State Neighborhood Agency. I'm not even sure who those people are. Um, but I know I, I've seen those. There are people in our society. People. I mean, they're still part of the country. They're still part of the system. No, 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 but, but um, mm. I'm not sure exactly what their responsibility is, and if they are meant to be a part of uh, the policing system. Um, I've, I've seen those uniforms, and I see them every now and then. Junctions, uh, uh, Admiralty Gate entrance there, and, and some of all of that. But I'm not sure why. And and that's the, it's one of the things that disgusts me and irritates irritates me the most. Why do you have people who are not even police officers? Enforcing, dragging people into into black marias and, and those police vans, and these are once again the Lagos State Neighborhood Agency. Who are who are they? And <laughs> it it is it is mind blowing the the level of authority and and the level of of inhumane be, um, character that the that a Nigerian has. Immediately, you give the Nigerian a uniform. Once you dress a Nigerian in a in any sort of uniform, they immediately and as long as it has anything to do with security or anything, they immediately see themselves as oppressors. Those LSNC, you know, guys were. I mean, you couldn't miss them in the drama that happened yesterday. They were a part of the whole process. You are not even in the police force. You 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 are not even. I'm not even sure who you are in the first place. Um, that's one angle. And, and, and I saw people saying you know, yesterday that, okay, oh, the LSNC has joined the battle. Um, because obviously, you've now turned yourself and your organization. They put out a statement. Um, uh, the, it, I'm just going to quickly share. It says, um, the management of the Lagos State Neighborhood Agencies has summoned its officers, ca uh, captured struggling with fellow arrested in um, a viral video emanating from the scene of the NSAS anniversary. In the aftermath of the incident, the G general manager of the agency, Prince Ifala de Oyekon, decried the conduct of the officers as he believed it was below the standard operating procedure of the agency, especially as it affects the protocol of arrest. As an agency striving to meet the role of the, uh, the themes agenda of the governor of the state, the agency will not condone any form of indiscipline or actions capable of bringing it to disrepute. Uh, disrepute. While it will, as a socially responsible management, give the officers opportunity for fair hearing, consequently, uh, the officers will, uh, will face an internally, or rather internal, orderly trial to determine their culpability in the said event and be dealt with if found guilty. So, so you know, we'll, we'll event, maybe, maybe we'll get into a conversation about how you don't even need to investigate further because the video evidence is right there of what they did. Yesterday, um, when I actually saw that video, I was really emotional, and of course, I shed a few tears. Really, really sad. Now, it brings us back to the fact that, you know, in the course of discharging our duties, first of all, one would expect that the Nigerian police force should understand what the Constitution talks about. I mean, I really do not understand, because we all know that we are, I mean, for every state, for every organization, there is a rule book, and for Nigeria, the Constitution is that book. We should abide and, you know, obey what is written in the constitution so for me i really don't understand if they don't understand you know what the constitution says or they are just um deciding I think to they do. i think it is just a complete disrespect for you know the rule of law and disrespect for whatever the constitution says because they you know didn't get into the police force to respect the constitution they get in, they got into the police force to be oppressors and to wear that uniform and to carry guns and whatnot that so it's not it's not so, a lack of understanding it is it is a disregard for whatever it is and and a disregard because the people on top i'm talking from the inspector general all the way down will somehow somewhere always take sides you see the Lagos State, State Commission of Police coming, you know, on live television to say that the people who were tear gassed were hoodlums who came to hijack really? or came to destroy, you know, some of all of that. I mean, basically just, I, I would say lying, you know, right there on I, I actually saw that statement and, you know, uh, because it generated a lot of conversation in different spaces. And yeah. my concern was... Uh, we had the Plus TV team on ground. Could it also mean that, you know, uh, the people who went there, I mean, the crew, the, the reporter and the camera uh, man, so, so, so I think they know was what a they're doing. They, they obviously know what they're doing. And when they, when they make these statements, you know, it's, it's, you know, to defend their actions. And it doesn't matter if they have to lie to defend their actions. They lie. Um, it is wild how people were arrested yesterday for carrying the Nigerian flag. It, it, it tells, it really just tells you 
the level of mental illness that exists in our society and with these persons and the reason that they are out on the streets. It's not to protect, it's not to serve. It is also crazy and it's important to, to state that in all your state there was a protest yesterday. Mm -hmm. Well, these protesters were guarded by the police. They were escorted by the police. This is in your state mm -hmm. that has a governor, Shema Kimbi, compared to other states that also try to protest. And so there's, you can see a clear difference between what the, what the governance energy is in your state and what it is in Lagos and what it is in Abuja. The police were there with the protesters. They had their memorial. They had their candlelight procession later in the evening. They did everything peacefully. The police was there. They escorted and they drove along with these protesters. And that's what it's obtained. That, that's, that's what, what it should be. be. Um, but it's a completely... People were arrested yesterday for carrying the Nigerian flag. There's a video of an of a Uber driver mm. who kept Particularly, saying... Particularly, that's, that's the one, that, that, that's the one that got up. my attention. That's the one that got my attention. And, you know, like I rightly mentioned, it's really, really sad. The fact that we continue to enthrone impunity, we continue to enthrone lawlessness, we continue to act, uh, you know, like rascals, we continue to act like people without a government, without a law, it is totally shameful. And I'm hoping that, you know, we get to a point where we understand now, even in the cost of discharging your duties, we should behave like civil people. So let's even assume you're going to arrest, you know, enforce an arrest. How do you even go about it? Why do you, you know, because sometimes I, I just ask myself, why do we treat people like animals? I'm sure that the dogs would do better. Really? I, I don't know, but it's really, really sad. And I'm hoping that, you know, we get to a point where we really, really understand that this is a democratic dispensation and that every state and every country is governed by the Constitution, especially in a democratic... And then there should be respect for the law, what the law says. And if you find people who are transgressing, they should be brought to book. People should be so made to... No, I really don't understand because it feels like it's a hopeless situation. So when you find a situation that you find protesters, who says these guys can get out on the street? Uh, I can protest. And just yesterday, just to chip this in, I mean, it wasn't like because I was trying to monitor where the protest was, you know, in different parts. And of course, it was a different thing entirely. But to even also notice that those who were protesting, I mean, those who cleaned the roads were also protesting yesterday. And at the end of the day, you had police force, uh, you have members of the Nigerian police force, you know, putting tear gas. How do you demanding for their pay? People protest. No, it's it's people, really people, really people, it's really really sad. I think I saw that story. Because yeah. People protest, you know, because of you know they they not be paid paid pensions or they've not been paid salaries for months. They get tear, <laughs> they get tear gas in Nigeria. It's, it's, it's um we'll, we'll have these discussions today, and of course, I'm sure you already know the answer to the question. Has anything changed? Um, but that's what we'll be talking about today. Um, some other thing, of course, that is uh, part of our top trending stories this morning is from the Minister of Information, Lai Mohammed, who says that CNN, DJ Switch, and um, Amnesty International, I believe, should apologize to the Nigerian government, you know, because they basically put out false narrative that there was a massacre at the Lekki uh, Toll Plaza on the 20th of October in 2020. Um, and, you know, I've also gotten to see a lot of reactions, so there's a lot of them hilarious, uh, but people mostly have said um, that... Uh, a government that refuses to own up, to accept, you know, trust responsibility will never be held accountable or will never allow itself to be held accountable. And this transcends in every single ramification, in every single sphere of the Nigerian state. Once the government fails, you know, to accept responsibility for anything, uh, they will never, you know, allow themselves to be held accountable. It includes the, the Zaria massacre, which I also saw trending yesterday, um, you know, in, in uh, Kaduna State. It includes every single time that the Nigerian government has failed to protect the lives and property of its citizens. There's reports by Fisayo uh, Shoyombo, it's called uh, Portraits of Blood and Tears, I think. Uh, there's also reports by the BBC, there's reports by uh, CNN's... Um, uh, Stephanie Busari, um, that I saw a couple of days ago, also, you know, that basically tell you know and show testimony of people who said that they were there. They saw that people actually died. They they saw dead bodies. They saw people were shot in their chest. There's a guy who was even part of the videos that we saw yesterday who said he was shot in his chest. Um, he survived. He was he's a he's a, um, a vlogger. Mm -hmm. uh, he survived and he was out again yesterday. And he he stated the things that he saw on that night. Um, the uh, guest that we had yesterday, who was a um, um, legal uh, um, practitioner for the NSAS protesters, also stated that they interviewed people. They spoke with many, many people who said that, yes, they actually did see p that people died, but it was a problem getting these people to testify and, you know, and their, sh their shanties were threatened, you know, to even stay silent at, at any time. Um, and so I don't expect the Nigerian government to own up because, you know, they, they would never agree to be held, 
you know, to account as to, you know, the, the, the loss of lives of the Nigerian. Because the Nigerian government doesn't understand the value of the Nigerian life. Now, so at the end of the day, it just brings us, you know, to, it brings to mind the fact that there's a, a total disconnect. That the government, the people who we elected, however, to represent our interests, there seemed to be a disconnect, or there is a disconnect with the government and the people. You know, because when I saw that report, in my mind, I'm like, what is really going on? Are we still in the same Nigeria? What are we talking about? With all of the news, with all of the information, with all that is on? I mean, yesterday, I guess, as we, we had on the breakfast yesterday, he did mention the fact that even when the police uh, was trying to leave in denial, they were saying, oh, uh, we weren't really there, we were at the station and all of that. Their own records, you know, yeah. give them out. Yeah. So with all of this, how do you steal? It's really sad. It's a, it's a work in progress, um, you know, and like, um, you know, one of the people that we spoke with, I think two days ago, is at the NSAR's, um, 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 you know, uh, campaign. And the demand for police accountability has come to stay. And it will, you know, continue to be a, a thing that would be spoken about until there is some level of accountability and responsibility by the Nigerian state and the Nigerian police. Mm now, one thing that I must really say is the fact that uh, gradually we're moving away, we're drifting away from that, uh, you know, particular perception that we have of Nigerians as very docile people, people who are quiet and don't get to speak. Uh, although some quarters will say, yes, we're not getting the number or we're not getting the kind of engagement that we want. But I think that this is actually fair. It's good that the Nigerian people are beginning to get involved in the space and in governance. And I'm hoping that, you know, Definitely keep the same energy. A lot more needs to be done. My dad just texted me to say that I'm being too emotional. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> um, love you too, Dad. Stay with us. Uh, we'll take a short break. When we come back, uh, we're going to off the press to share with you the major stories making headlines across the, uh, the papers this morning. And uh, Mr. Ezekiel Nyaitok will be joining us once again. Good morning.